Yes, it's clobbering time, baby. Last night, All Elite Wrestling, AEW All Out from the windy city of Chicago, Illinois. And man, what a hell of a show. Thank you for tuning in and listening to this recap live right here on YouTube. As always, I'm your host, Encyclopedia Sports, Cool Hand Luke 96. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below with that thumbs up button. Share hashtag AEW, hashtag AEW all out. Chat questions and comments, super chat, super stickers. Always greatly appreciated. To kick off the night on the buy-in, we had Jurassic Express along with Best Friends taking on the HFO, Matt Hardy, Private Party, and the Hybrid 2. We also then had a AEW Women's Championship match with Britt Baker and Chris Statlander along with a Women's Casino Battle Royale, in which the winner will receive, as always, a future title shot. The TNT title was also on the line with Miro defending against Eddie Kingston. That match actually kicked off the show. A Steel Cage AEW World Tag Team Championship bout as well with the Young Bucks and Lucha Brothers In singles action with the Forbidden Door now busted down, it was John Moxley and Satoshi Kojima. We also had Chris Jericho and MJF, in which if Jericho were to lose, he will never, ever, as he likes to say, wrestle again in All Elite Wrestling. Sam Punk's debut in AEW as well, taking on Darby Allin, wrestling his first professional wrestling match. In seven years, Paul White, of course, formerly known as The Big Show, taking on QT Marshall, and then the main event of the evening, Christian Cage challenging Kenny Omega for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. We'll begin with the buy-in kickoff pre-show, as mentioned, Jurassic Express with Best Friends taking on the HFO, Matt Hardy, Private Party, and the Hybrid 2. And after a very good back-and-forth eight-man tag team matchup, Jurassic Express and Best Friends picked up the win, defeating Matt Hardy, Private Party, and the Hybrid 2. Redeem these nuts, as Eddie Kingston said on AEW Rampage Friday night. Well, after Miro defeated him and retained his TNT title at All Out, Mero tweeted on Twitter, Ask and you shall receive your nuts have been redeemed. Mero still the AEW TNT champion. The so-called professional wrestling forbidden door is in fact open. John Moxley took on Satoshi Kojima, defeating him in the second matchup of the night before Monero Suzuki attacked post-match, which now sets up a match this Wednesday night on AEW Dynamite from Moxley's hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio. AEW will be in Cincy this Wednesday, followed by Newark, New Jersey, NYC, Rochester, Philly, and then mid-October because of some scheduling conflicts still on TNT before, of course, Dynamite and Rampage move full-time to TBS in January of 2022. We'll have some Dynamite and Rampages on Wednesday, Fridays, and Saturdays before Full Gear will be now November the 13th. Push back a week and we'll get into that a little bit more later on. The Dr. DMD herself, as expected, retained her AEW Women's Championship defeating Chris Statlander. However, the Casino Battle Royale was after the Steel Cage Tag Team Championship match that followed the Women's Championship match, but we're going to throw this in right now, then get into the Tag Team title along with the two singles matches with Jericho, MJF, Punk, and Darby Allin along with the main event here in a minute, so stay tuned. But the Casino Battle Royale, which featured 21 participants. Of course, those being determined by suits from a deck, clubs, diamonds, hearts, spades, and then the Joker, who came out last, who eventually 
won the whole damn thing once again. Normally, with these AEW Casino Battle Royales, whoever is in fact the Joker, nine times out of ten, ninety-five percent of the time, does in fact end up winning before they get a future title shot, whether it's for the World Championship, the TNT title, the Tag Team Championships, and now the women's. We had in the clubs, Sheeta, Sky Blue, Emi Sakura, The Bunny, and Abaddon. The Diamonds were the returning Anna J, Kira Hogan, Kylan King, Diamante, and Nyla Rose. Hearts included Thunder Rosa, Penelope Ford, Rio, Jimmy Hayter, along with Big Swole. And then the spades consisted of Tay Conte, Red Velvet, Legit Layla Hirsch, Jade Cargill, and Rebel. The Joker was Ruby Soho, of course, formerly known as Ruby Riot, in the WWE, who was released along with everyone else who was has been recently released from the world of World Wrestling Entertainment. But now she is all in with AEW as well, and Ruby Soho wins the Casino Battle Royale and will now receive a future women's championship match at some point down the line. We'll see if that's going to be on a Dynamite or a Rampage. Uh, I know this week on Dynamite, as mentioned, they announced John Moxley and Monero Suzuki, along with Dustin Rhodes, Goldust, and Malachi Black. And then because Pac was having travel issues once again, the Andrade El Idolo Pac match um, that was supposed to take place at All Out was pulled. That'll be this week on Rampage as well. Rampage going to be taped this Wednesday along with Dynamite Dark and Dark Elevation. Dark's actually going to be filmed at Universal Studios at some point in time in the future and that's going to be their new home so when you go to an AEW event you're only going to get to see now um, unless it's a two night three night combo depending on where they're at and what shows they're running uh, say for a pay-per-view then as well um, it's really only going to be Dark Elevation, Dynamite and Rampage but um, yeah this week it'll be as mentioned Pac, Pac, of course, Neville um, taking on Andrade uh, this Friday night on Rampage. But then with, as mentioned, Ruby winning the Casino Battle Royale, we'll see when she faces Britt Baker uh, for the Women's Championship. They normally like to do these very early on, like right off the bat. I wouldn't be shocked if they just because it's going to be a Women's Championship match and they're going to be in... uh, the NYC area two out of the next three weeks and then in the uh, state of New York three uh, out of the next four weeks if you want to include Newark New Jersey and with the state of uh, NYC but um, yeah encourage if you haven't been to an AW show if you like professional wrestling if you've been to a WWE show before you'll enjoy yourself in an AEW show. I've been to a few videos from all professional wrestling events I've ever attended right here on the channel, so be sure to go check those out. But regardless when or where, Britt Baker will now have to defend her AEW Women's Championship against the new Ruby Soho after she won the Casino Battle Royale at All Out. In the co-main event of the evening, it was Paul White and QT Marshall was an all right match i mean don't want to say it but sort of a piss break match it was right after cm punk and darby allen this match started about 11 p.m eastern time last night before the main event began with omega and christian cage and then the show was done about quarter to 12 um so i don't know if something ran a little too long early on and they were going to be done by 11:30 or uh, something went a little faster than expected and they had some time to spare and then there's the 15 minute gap from when they ended and then when they would normally end say around midnight I mean still four hour show I mean especially Chicago got their money's worth for three shows of Dynamite Rampage and the all out pay-per-view 
plus dark and dark elevation so technically five if you want to add it all up and have it equal out and now of course Cincinnati for Moxley's homecoming and then uh, NYC for a few weeks and then it seems to me they're going to be staying on the east coast and in the midwest from now until the end of the year and then they're going to try to work their way back out west where they were right when COVID hit uh, before they had to set up shop in Jacksonville at Daly's Place. As all out last night was the first pay-per-view that AEW has had on the road, not an arena in Jacksonville, Florida, since Revolution, which was also in Chicago the same night on Leap Day 2020, February the 29th, 2020, in which John Moxley defeated Chris Jericho to become the new AEW World Heavyweight Champion before, of course, Moxley dropped it to Omega the same night Sting debuted last December. And then a few weeks later, of course, Brody Lee passed away. Now here we are into 2021. For the most part, things are back to normal, but as much as everything changes everything stays the same and you know we're sort of still in this loop as we've been groundhog day wise the past year and a half but at least we can actually um go do stuff go to events vaccinated or not mask no mask honestly who the hell cares let's all just get back to normal uh but i'll digress there so yeah all out last night hell of a show so far and with what's to come let me know in the comments below what you thought of AEW all out zato miedo the lucha brothers penta and ray phoenix defeated matt nick jackson the young bucks to become the new AEW world tag team champions along with chris jericho defeating mjf after initially losing because his foot was on the rope and Aubrey Edwards, the referee in that very matchup, did not see it. So the match was restarted and then Jericho, of course, won. So he'll continue on in AEW as thought. You knew regardless if he was to win or lose this match that because of the stipulation, if he would have lost, he'd never wrestle in AEW again. Well... You know damn well Jericho's not leaving the company anytime soon. So, yeah, win or lose, he'd still be around. Now, Fozzie is going to be going back on tour here. I mean, they technically already are on tour, but uh, the bulk of their dates are coming up over the next month. So uh, we'll see if Jericho is still going to be on TV or not uh, for some Dynamites and Rampages over the next month or so. Uh, but MJF, even with the... Uh, push he's received uh since AEW began uh he's still not at the top i mean he's up there but he's not top dog yet he's one of the top heels in all of all the wrestling but uh just as when you think that okay he's gonna win this or win that and for the most part sometimes he does but it it seems to me it's split down the middle. It's 50-50, depending on who he's facing. Here he loses once again because of the stipulation. I mean, technically he did win, but then the match was restarted, and then Jericho won. So they both won, and Jericho gets to stay as thought. So, of course, they work their way around it, and, you know, we'll move on. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what both Jericho and MJF do over the next few months or so uh, if they're going to continue to feud or not unless if you know they want to keep it going as Jericho as long as his few feuds have been in AEW with everyone he's faced there's always been the grudge match and then this was the grudge match with these two last night but I mean unless there's somebody else in line for Jericho to put over uh, even with picking up the win again or they want to continue to push MJF and then figure out if they're going to have him win or lose at that point in time down the line or not only time's going to tell we'll see but um you know we'll get there when we get there but it was a damn good match I mean all these matches were I mean honestly they were and CM Punk and Darby Allen 
was then next. Uh, of course, seven years since Phil Brooks, CM Punk, wrestled in a professional wrestling ring, of course, after he left WWE, got into MMA, didn't do so good, but, um, of course, doing commentary for some MMA promotions, along with uh, now back in pro wrestling, returning last month on the second ever Rampage uh, in Chi-Town at the United Center, and then they were also in Chi-Town for, of course, All Out Weekend with Dynamite Rampage and All Out with Dark, Dark Elevation and the Fan Fest that they put on once again as well. Uh, but um, Darby came out first. Sting had said on Rampage, hey, I'm going to stay in the back. You do your thing. You know, good luck. Punk ended up winning as expected. I mean, unless because there was the thought, okay, he's coming back, but if he puts over Darby, okay, but really, he he has to win this. I mean, you would think so. And he, I mean, he did. Um, but another good match. I mean, the finish was was probably the, the best part. Um, Punk was actually wearing uh, tights instead of trunks, which was, of course, a little different, changing it up, but you know, hell, he hasn't wrestled in uh, seven and a half years. I get he's been training and training and training, so there shouldn't have been any ring rust, and there really wasn't. Um, but, uh, yeah, CM Punk, Darby Allen was a, uh, a good match, and then post-match, uh, Sting did, in fact, come back out, and then, because Sting's even said that um, he would have loved to have faced Punk you know, in his prime. I mean, technically still, they can do that if they want to. Um, you know, because Sting then would would have, you would have thought, or would think, put over Punk when that time rolls around if they get there. But we'll see what they do, because honestly, who knows what's next for Punk? Who knows what's next for Darby Allen? Who knows what's next for Sting? I mean, hell, he hasn't even really wrestled uh, since he arrived in AEW. But, um... Post-match, as mentioned, yes, yeah, Sting came out. Uh, they looked each other in the eyes, staring each other down. Sting put his hand out. Punk shaked. And then Punk did the same to Darby. They wrapped it up and moved on to the co-main event, as mentioned earlier, which was Paul White and QT Marshall, which show ended up picking up the win. But, um, yeah. Jericho defeated MJF and then Punk over Darby and uh, Punk in the meantime after all that with uh, Sting and Darby to close it out uh, Punk looking at the camera and some audio was picked up but you can still read his lips of what he was saying and and I quote, Punk said, It's been seven years and y'all didn't fucking forget. Let's fucking go. And then he got up on the uh, turnbuckles in the corner. I'm back, motherfuckers. And then they cut, went to the co-main event, and then the main event of the evening with the finish that we're about to get to right now. So stay tuned. But thank you once more for tuning in and listening to this AEW All Out recap. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media so in the main event of the evening for AEW All Out 2021 it was Kenny Omega defending his AEW World Heavyweight Championship against Christian Cage the same man he lost the TNA Impact World Heavyweight title to last month during the first ever AEW Rampage in which I was at videos from that week of AEW Dynamite, Rampage, Dark, and Dark Elevation live right here on the channel. Be sure to go check out those videos. But um, this time around, after Omega lost to Christian before, he didn't go for two. Omega picked up the win as thought. Kenny Omega is still your AEW World Heavyweight Champion. However, post-match, this is where it got interesting. This is what has everyone talking as the whole entire professional wrestling world went boom last night after Omega defeated Christian Cage to retain his AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Matt Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks 
came out followed by the good brothers to sweet me and just by the look the young bucks had especially after losing their tag team titles earlier in the night to the lucha brothers i was thinking a few things especially with rumors swirling on in the weeks and months to come on what's going to happen in the world of pro wrestling especially potentially in aew one Either Hangman Adam Page is going to return, of course, because he's been off TV as of late. They insert Christian to challenge Omega at All Out in his place. So, okay, one, Hangman returns. He'll be back at some point in time. He didn't return last night, but he'll be back. He'll probably end up winning the championship now at full gear. So, we'll see, you know, where they go with that because he is from the state of Virginia Full Gear is now on Saturday, November 13th. The following Wednesday, they're going to be in the 757 for the first time ever for Dynamite and a potential Rampage taping for that following Friday. So, of course, it all adds up and makes sense in that regard uh, that the first episode, of course, following his potential win in about two months or so to dethrone Omega and become world heavyweight champion this is hangman adam page i'm speaking of right now and then they have the show as they have homecoming for moxley this wednesday as they've had homecomings for other professional wrestlers in the company elsewhere throughout the country as well um because hangman's eventually going to defeat omega it's just a matter of when and he of course should have done it hear it all out but pulled recently has been on tv wife is currently pregnant congratulations um so he'll be back just no matter when and then whenever he does they'll insert him back into the fold especially with what i'm about to say with what happened and it all add up and make even more sense in that regard too here in a matter of minutes so st- stick around stay tuned but um yeah at some point in time, Hangman's going to defeat Omega. And then, you know, even with all the other uh, surprises that AEW's had up their sleeve as of late, along with everyone they're continuing to build uh, on the roster, um, they have champions in waiting. However, to continue here, to wrap this up, as I mentioned, the Young Bucks, along with Gallows and Anderson, came out. Thinking a few things, Hangman returns. He didn't. Two is Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, his real life name, of course, what he went by on the indies before WWE as well. He comes out and challenges Kenny Omega, all right? Because Omega got on the mic, and we'll get into exactly what he said here in a second. But, or three, the Young Bucks, as mentioned, just the look that they had walking down the ramp to the ring, especially after losing to the Lucha Brothers, you know, it's been the demise uh, of a faction in another company as of late, of course. Uh, that dust has settled. Some have moved on. Some have stayed. Um, if, of course, you know what I'm talking about, congratulations. You just earned yourself a free subscription right here to the youtube channel be sure to hit that red subscribe button uh and if not well dig a little deeper look harder and be sure to still subscribe in the meantime but yeah just that look that the young bucks had especially with okay they they kicked hangman out of the elite recently and and of course it ties into with hangman going to be challenging omega at some point in time down the line like i just said do the Young Bucks turn, even with Gals and Anderson out there, okay? Two sweep me once more. You got the Bullet Club, the Elite, minus a few. All right, and we'll get more into uh, that side of it in a second as well. Uh, do the Young Bucks potentially turn on Kenny Omega? And out comes Adam Cole, baby. And then we have two sets of the Bullet Club or the Elite, whatever the hell you want to call them. I mean... Either Omega and the Young Bucks, or Omega and the Good Brothers, or even Adam Cole and the Young Bucks, or Adam Cole and the Good Brothers. I mean, personally, I would think down the line, you know, if this were to happen, uh, it would be Omega and the Good Brothers and Adam Cole 
and the Young Bucks. So once more to sweep me. So yeah, eventually I do believe that'll happen at some point in time, but only time will tell. But in the meantime, as mentioned, Omega was on the mic. Okay, this is all post matches between eleven thirty quarter to twelve last night to wrap up all out. Meg was on the mic. He said that no one is currently on his level and the only people that would ever, ever have a chance to beat him are either not here in AEW, they're already retired, or, and of course this was the best line of the whole night, other than what what Miro tweeted afterwards and then Lana subtweeting him uh, as well, be sure you go check that out. But yeah, you know, Omega saying that no one's on his level. The only people uh, that would ever have a chance to beat him are either not here, already retired, or dead. And then of course the lights went out. Boom! AEW shock the system. Adam Cole is back from the dead as he is all elite, baby. And then I got to thinking with Cole, add this in here, looking at Cole's career thus far to this point, I personally think it is fair to say, I mean, everybody has their own opinion, um, and you can let me know in the comments below yours if you disagree, but looking back, okay, his indie career, even with his New Japan run with the Bullet Club, a lot like comparison here, going through, say, like junior high school and high school. And then, especially with the number four, with the four years, uh, with when he went to WWE, uh, showing up at TakeOver Brooklyn in 2017, and now here four years later, he's no longer with WWE. But that would have sort of been, you know, like going to college, four years in school, And, you know, I say that to that extent because, you know, he was never really on the main roster, okay? Maybe a few times with that NXT invasion they had during Survivor Series like two years ago. And and by the way, there's a video right here on the channel as well that uh, the event I was at, Live and Living Color, uh, it was the day after uh, the WWE Saudi Arabia debacle with Crown Jewel and... They had a SmackDown the next night, and in that main event, it was Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan in singles action, and footage is right here on the channel, so be sure to go check that out as well, but like I said, with him in in WWE, uh, he was never really on the main roster, okay, NXT Invasion for about a month or so with the build to Survivor Series, but even as a former NXT champion, if he would have re-signed which, of course, now he didn't. He's all in with all elite wrestling. They probably would have screwed it up for him, say, on Raw or SmackDown, just like they have for the most part with everyone else that's been brought up in the past. So, I mean, honestly, good for Adam Cole, as he's now technically, to wrap up, circle around back to with what I was saying here to compare, he's now in the pros in the big leagues in AEW alongside Britt Baker, who he is currently in a relationship with. So, of course, I guess you could say technically they are what, say, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch are in the WWE. That's what Adam Cole and Britt Baker are and will be in AEW moving forward. So then Cole got into the ring, and like I said, he looked like he was pissed off too, uh, coming for some retribution especially after being poisoned and killed off of being the elite a few months, of course, before he signed with the WWE four years ago. But no, he ended up super kicking Jungle Boy, okay, who was in the ring as Jurassic Express was out there to save Christian from the post-match attack from the elite before Omega got on the mic and started saying all this. And then, of course, Cole came out. And then Adam Cole rejoins... The club, the Bullet Club, the Elite, once again, whatever the hell you want to call them, just in the end, make sure to give the two sweet. And then they hug it out before we had story time with Adam Cole, baby, saying the Elite is the most dominant faction in the history of pro wrestling. And now you can sing along 
to this theme song as well as there ain't no chance I repeat no chance in hell that anyone is going to stop us now and then of course he gave the mic back to Kenny Omega because he is the AEW World Heavyweight Champion and and basically the current leader of what they got going and Omega was about to sign off with of course goodbye and good night but wait there's more Billy Mays out came Daniel Bryan of course by his real name and what he wrestled as before WWE as Bryan Danielson still the same intro for the entrance music but then it switches up uh, be sure to go check out uh, both Cole's and Bryan's new entrance music Bryan Danielson along with Adam Cole are now both in AEW they did both debuts in the same night within minutes of each other uh, but Brian Danielson um, before he and Jurassic Express along with Christian they took down the elite to close out the show so they cut closing credits they faded to black of course Malachi is facing Dustin this Wednesday continue the Cody feud that Malachi has currently got going on did have a Malachi uh, vignette promo last night as well I might add but then after they went off the air of course seeing this on social media online Dan O'Brien got on the mic after they went off and had this to say while in the meantime giving his best Vince McMahon impression in the process talking about talking for too long while you're out in the ring which of course got a big pop uh, and then a few boos when he sort of did mention WWE um, when he uh, worked and saying he he loved where he uh, previously worked at but um, yeah Daniel Bryan along with Adam Cole they're both now in AEW so the yes no maybe so man whatever he's going to go by of course in that video I saw uh, there were yes chance there were no chance as well uh, but Daniel Bryan saying this is why me and other people want to want to come to AEW not already have so that also gets you thinking okay honestly who's next or who is he technically referring to on wanting to come to AEW Bray Wyatt of course just because he just got released make a lot of sense it honestly would but as I've said before you know because they're signing how much uh, AEW is signing I should say a lot of former WWE talent you know sort of especially trying to build their company as they are watch themselves but they're going to do what they want and people are going to love it so it is what it is and it's honestly who the hell cares just like WWE is going to do what they want in the end anyway too so um you know yeah Bray Wyatt Wyndham Rotunda whatever he's going to go by because he's not going to be able to go by Bray Wyatt or the Fiend Bray Wyatt by any means in AEW but his uh no compete clause I do believe runs out of the end of October early November sometime around there so uh keep an eye out of course you know because full gears that next pay-per-view short few weeks afterwards that okay maybe then they've done debuts on uh dynamite and rampage though so i mean that that's not out of the question they could do it uh of course depending on where they are though too uh do some along those lines but um of course would love to see uh aj styles finn balor kevin owens uh just because storyline wise makes absolute perfect sense um, especially with the history those three have with everyone that's at the top in AEW right now. Um, but back to with what Daniel Bryan was saying here. Uh, says he loved where he worked before, but he still left. Because uh, he got booed when he said uh, he loved where he worked before, but then cheers when he, when he still left, just like a lot of others. Uh, a couple reasons he left 
and those are in fact uh, he listed three different separate reasons the AEW talent especially everyone who has been with the company since day one which is also an upcoming WWE pay-per-view name by the way on January the 1st if you did not know but uh, yeah lol to that but everyone who believed in AEW and that for sure as hell doesn't mean everyone that is still continuing to bash AEW even with say maybe one or two of their favorites now in the company acting as if they've watched or know what the hell's been going on since the start now he didn't say that last part as I did I added that in but I felt it was right and necessary to say at this point in time Daniel Bryan however did say he name dropped Jericho Moxley some other young men and women who have busted their ass on the indies and now boy has AEW delivered so Daniel Bryan saying let us thank the original members if you go back of course to the press conference the lead-in to the first ever double or nothing in early 2019 uh, and then before they had the TNT deal starting up in October 19 everyone from that point in time on everyone that was an original member let us thank them another reason why Daniel Brian Brian Danielson of course came to AEW was goddamn us AEW fans are the best in the world and then the third and final reason was because Brian is a wrestler not a superstar all you WWE fanboys out there and Brian Danielson once again gonna have to get used to of course saying his name uh, like that and seeing him compete like that because it's been so long since uh, his independent days before WWE but he is now in AEW to wrestle damn it before ending his promo with saying that there's some people who call themselves elite of course referring to the elite around here and he's here to see if they really are so right before he got up and uh, went home on the turnbuckle closing out the show before they closed it down for the night Dan O'Brien AEW let's fucking go now personally I haven't listened to the press conferences okay that AEW uh, loves to do after pay-per-views so after all out from last night yet but um, now I will at some point in time like I normally do but um, to close out the show once again we had a Bebe, if you will, come back from the dead, which is hard to do, and then a return of an American dragon in the year 2021, who would have ever thought, in the world of pro wrestling. So once again, what a time to be alive. And then moving ahead, we'll see how and what both AEW and WWE programming does from here on out, but man, pro wrestling is awesome now personally as well to close this out here i'm still going to be watching as i do nothing's going to be changing in that regard but man oh man wwe needs to step the hell up get their head out of their ass and get out of whatever year they think it is or whatever galaxy they're currently in and realize what the hell is going on I know personally they care, as I would hope everyone else can see that as well, but I know they care, it just seems like they don't, and as I've always said, they're still going to do what they want anyways, in the end, they're going to run their business the way they want to, so it is what it is, but that so-called piss ant company, Triple H, and I feel so bad for you right now, I do. But at the same time, I don't. Because, once again, that so-called pissant company, that the same people that said they wouldn't be around in a few years, or would never, ever watch, or who are just now hopping on the bandwagon while well, get on while the train's still at the station. Because it's about to pull out, just like your dad should have done. But nowadays, we can watch everything and enjoy it. Plain and simple regardless of how good or bad it is but when it's clear as day when right now 
right now one is better than the other because one is running in place doing the same old same old shit all the time while the other is progressing i mean come on man wake the hell up now i also understand too it's a marathon not a sprint and room wasn't built in a day as i always like to say too but i mean technically what aew is currently doing the wwe yes has already done but still come on like seriously so yeah i'll leave it at that for the time being i'll digress let me know in the comments below what you think but aw just set the pro wrestling world once again on fire and business is booming and we're all about to go boom once more whether we watch WWE, AEW, Impact, Ring of Honor, New Japan, I don't really care. But thank you for tuning in and listening. Now, AEW did announce, as I mentioned earlier, that Full Gear is now going to be November the 13th, not November the 6th, as originally announced. So only going to be pushed back a week or so. But keep an eye out for uh, some upcoming videos right here on the channel, along with Going back, uh, as mentioned earlier, and checking out previous videos right here on the channel from both AEW and WWE events in the past, including most recently, within the past month, month and a half, almost two months uh, or an hour or so, uh, a WWE TV and a house show since they both returned to the road touring with, yeah, it was a WWE Friday Night Smackdown and a... WWE Super Show House Show with both Raw and SmackDown talent. And then AEW Dark, Dark Elevation, Dynamite, and the very first ever Rampage as well. Be sure to go check out those videos along with also uh, keeping an eye out for upcoming live streams and videos in college football, the NFL as it is football season, and continuing on all year long with pro wrestling. So thank you for listening hopefully you enjoyed just be sure if you haven't done so already be sure to hit that like follow and subscribe button links in the description below on social media and uh, let me know once more what you thought of aew all out as now we're going to be on the road to raw tonight new nxt a week from tomorrow dynamite and impact which is on thursdays rampage and then ring of honor for myself on late saturday night early sunday morning and then new japan pro wrestling as well as mentioned earlier everything seems to be back to normal but uh slow and steady we're getting there but uh yeah all out last night what a hell of a show and um you had ruby riot ruby soho um CM Punk's return match in pro wrestling along with um, the Lucha Brothers being crowned new tag team champions and uh, to close it out once more Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan jumping ship from WWE to come to AEW and now people are, are saying well how can WWE you know, let them go to AEW, let alone any other pro wrestling company. Well, they can try as hard as they want to potentially re-sign them. But if their deal runs up and they don't want to re-sign, they don't have to re-sign. And they wished not to re-sign. So now both Adam Cole and Dan O'Brien are all in with AEW as all out comes to a close for this year and now full gear is in about two months or so as mentioned um and uh yeah we'll see what happens moving forward programming wise for uh the whole entire world of pro wrestling uh, more so than not especially with both the wwe and AEW. so once again thank you for listening hopefully you enjoyed make sure to like follow and subscribe on social media links in the description below